It is 7 a.m. in Aberdeen, South Dakota. This is definitely the smallest airport that I have ever flown out of, or into for that matter. This is the terminal. It is 10.30 p.m. I'm gonna play some long tones before I go to bed. Maybe try to do just 20 minutes of uh, just sustained tones. It's so easy to just end the day and not, you know, I was traveling today. I came back from South Dakota. Today was Mother's Day. Hope you guys all had a nice day with your mothers. It's just really easy to go to bed and not practice and say, ah, I'll make up for it tomorrow. One of the things I'm trying to do is, is not do that because really you can't make up for it tomorrow. And just a little bit today makes a difference. Like if I do 20 minutes right now, I'll feel better about myself. You know, like mentally, I'll feel like I did at least some of what I know I need to do versus just abandon it and leave it for tomorrow. Plus there's so much music that I'm gonna have to learn over the next couple of weeks. I really can't take any shortcuts. Speaking of learning music, somebody mentioned in a comment yesterday about the, the kids I was working with, hey, why were they using sheet music on their performance? Well, for one, they're in high school and they don't have a lot of experience you know, doing anything other than reading music. That's something we worked on while we were together. In fact, I taught them one of my songs by ear and it was great because they didn't think they could do it at first. I said, it's simple, it's a blues, I'll teach it to you. They were like, oh no, we can't do that. They were able to do it, they were fine. We just sang it, we practiced singing it and playing it and they were great. And today, the whole plane ride back, I was listening to a giant playlist of snarky puppy music that I'm about to start relearning, revisiting. It just got me thinking about the other kind of visual, not reading music, but visualizing up here and visualizing here. People ask me sometimes, what, what do you mean when you say you visualize music? Are you visualizing a piano keyboard or the music staff? I think I'm visualizing kind of more than anything where my fingers are on the saxophone. Like I visualize, I, I sort of feel where I am on the horn. And it's easier when I'm actually holding the horn. Away from it, I don't necessarily have that same visualization. But once the horn is in my hand, I do. And the, the other connection is just by learning the music from listening to it and vocalizing it, you know, singing it and feeling that vibration. I always tell my students, like, put your hand right here and sing a phrase that you're trying to learn, whether it's something you're transcribing or just something you're making up, whatever. Put your hand here and feel yourself even talking. You'll feel the vibrations, the good vibrations. Making that connection is important because once you, you acknowledge that step and then you go to your saxophone or whatever your instrument is, now there's a, there's a through line between here to here to here to there. So what I'm gonna be doing a lot over the next couple of weeks is just a lot of playing along to music, a lot of looping short sections, a lot of just trying to visualize where the, the music fits on the horn, things like that. It's late tonight, so I totally don't wanna to play right now. I don't. I would love to go to bed, 
but I know that I'll feel better if I just get a little bit of time. This is the part that sucks right here. It's the dry reed, the horn's not put together. I haven't played yet today, so I don't, there's no, of course I don't feel warmed up. I'm not warmed up. This right here, this is the sticky part. This is the part I hate about practicing. I know if I do it though, 20 minutes from now, just even playing long tones, I'll probably want to keep playing. That's what tends to happen. This is the resistance. This is the hard part to get through. Mm hmm.